Well, greetings, everyone, and welcome to a very special online event today. It's called The Hidden Key to Receiving Accurate Higher Guidance and Clear Intuition. Open the lesser known Alta Major Chakra to enhance your health and improve your life. My name is Stephen Dynan. I'm the founder and CEO of the Shift Network, and I'm really delighted to be with you here, getting to explore the frontiers of really getting access to the widest possible guidance on the moment. And for me, this is a particularly important exploration because uh, higher guidance has been at the foundation of how we created and developed Shift as a, as a company and how we really navigate in the world. And we're going to explore how we can get that in a much more stable, accessible way through a lesser known part of our subtle energy anatomy. And we're going to be doing that with um, Reverend Dr. Tiffany Barsati. She's a medical intuitive, she's a spiritual counselor, and she's a researcher in the biofield sciences. So we're going to get a good mix of some of the leading edge science and practices to help open this lesser known chakra that can really give us so much valuable insight and guidance. So with that said, Tiffany, welcome to today's program. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here with you and to have this experience. Thank you. Well, I, I just love higher guidance. I feel like it makes life so much easier. So it's great to be having some really solid science done around how to how to get at that access in a more sustainable way. So I know we're going to have the, a chance to dive deep with you, and we are going to do an experiential for people to open this up as well. But I want to let people know up front, we're going to have a chance to go much deeper with Tiffany in a brand new program called Open to Divine Consciousness Through Your Ultimate Major Chakra. So we'll share a little bit about that towards the end of the hour. What led you to really focus on the Alta Major Chakra as this, this portal for transformation and for guidance? As far as how I came to this work, it kind of came to me. I was born open, and that means having all the clairs, the clairvoyance, clairsentience, claircognizance, clair... Uh, I called it clair overwhelming because it was just, it was too much, and too much really for a child. And that obviously didn't have any skills in modulating energy or things like that. So I willed it away. I was having prophetic dreams and they would be prophetic, obviously coming true and uh, really just so disconcerting. And I would know things about people that I really didn't want to know. I would see things about people I really didn't want to see. And it was just very uncomfortable. So I willed it away and did not care to ever open any of these so-called gifts, I really saw it more as a curse, not a blessing. So I got whacked with a few uh, spiritual two by fours on the path. And when I was uh, about 38 years old, I was living across the street from ground zero when the buildings were being taken apart, I got super sick and I didn't know what was wrong. And I ended up having this wake up call that I needed to get on my path. And that's a whole story unto itself, but this wake up call really led me to this work. And I went to go begin studying with Carolyn Mace and Norm Sheely at a graduate seminary by the name of Holos University. And I had a great honor of being able to have the privilege to be able to go deep in esoteric sciences. And I got involved in some of the theosophy and Vedantic um, philosophies. And I just, these thoughts were thinking me. These were things that just kept uh, kind of catapulting and I didn't know where it was leading me. And then all of a sudden it all came together. So the, the reticular activating system, the vagus nerve and the Alta major chakra. And I know we're going to speak more about that. Okay, well, let's talk about that synthesis. So I, what I love about you and your work is that you're really bridging from a, a good physiological, biological understanding to the more esoteric. So let's start with the biological uh, underpinnings of the Ultima Major Chakra and, and how that's reflected in the, the sort of overall architecture of our brains. Yeah, beautiful. So the thing that's interesting is, so the Ultima Major Chakra, it lines up right at the back head at the base of the skull. And for people who are in Chinese medicine, it's also known as the DU16, DU16 channel. And that is, um, it, it, there's a sensitivity to that. This isn't a place that you just go and needle. Um, and this has been a shrouded kind of teaching. Many healers over time knew about this energy chakra. It's known as a minor chakra that acts as a major chakra. And chakras are, are not physically in our systems. 
they are energetically, they are lined up with the spine, there's front and back, and they have very specific behavior. And the Alta Major is known in many cosmologies as being the mouth of or the gate of God. And I've had many clairvoyants uh, speak to me over the years in, in as this research was coming about, how they would have a sensation of information coming in like a portal and it would get a little warm. And there's, you know, there's even a practice that you can do where you can feel the incoming stream that is really meant for us to be turning this on and, and being able to smooth out this energy, if you will. It activates both in the etheric and the physical. So this is really, the, it's a gateway bridge, like, like you said. And in many ways, it's also a bridge to the high heart. So many of us as healers and uh, sort of light servers in the world are focused on the heart chakra, which is beautiful. And also we want to be working with the higher heart. And that gets us involved with the Alta Major Chakra because the Alta Major has a direct connection. Let's go, let's go into, the, uh, into the neurobiology that supports this too. You were talking about the reticular activating system, which probably a lot of people don't know what that is. So the, the reticular activating system is in the brainstem. It, it is part of the reticular formation. It's about as long as our little finger in the central of, like, in the base of the neck, Interestingly, it all lines up with what we're talking about here. The vagus nerve, the alta major, and the reticular formation all line up together. That's also what caught my attention. There is a behavioral alertness to what happens in the physiology, in literally the, the cascade of the neurotransmitters and this brain communication that happens. So the reticular activating system will alert us, let's say the house is on fire when we're asleep. The reticular activating system is the part of us that is always conscious and always has awareness to what's going on. So that's the system that will alert us, smell smoke, turn on the olfactory system, even though we could be in the deepest of sleep and then be able to give us the ability to have a reflexive response. So there's the afferent, the up and down the ascending and descending aspects of the reticular formation and what it's doing in the cerebral, in the rest of the brain, and then also what it's signaling, which is curious because now that involves the vagus as well. But there's a lot of uh, hormonal activity that the reticular formation also has to do with, which is serotonin, norepinephrine, and GABA. And GABA is like the calming gives you such a, a, a warm kind of warm and fuzzy feeling and serotonin it's the mood stabilizer it's the the part of us that actually feels good and then the norepinephrine it has to do with us being able to have the arousal to be able to go when we need to go so it's really such a regulating system overall and and there's a lot of properties there that have to do with how it is that we create our reality what it is that we see, there's direct connections to our visual cortices as well. And that's the part that I find really fascinating when we think about bringing our consciousness and that which we choose that, to create in the world. So you've mentioned the vagus nerve and uh, we, we've actually done several programs on the vagus nerve. There's a lot of interesting research about how it's sort of like a master guide or controller for a lot of different systems and also taking input from the rest of our body. So Maybe share a little bit how you see that connecting with like, if this is the portal for higher guidance. Like why does that connect up with the vagus nerve? Oh, it's such a good question, Stephen. So there's a few answers to that. There's levels and layers to this. I believe that this has to do with how it is that we are learning to marry our personality and our soul. Hmm. Because we can be coming from a vagus nerve that's highly charged and agitated, and our vagus nerve is very reflexive. It is going to give us instant feedback for what's going on in the body. It's the 10th the cranial nerve that also branches in that same area. It sits dorsal, so it's just in back of the reticular formation. And what it's, it's literally connecting all of the organs and systems in the body. So it is the feedback loop, if you will, to how are things functioning. 
Well, when we start bringing things to our conscious awareness at the personality level about things that we are interested in changing and developing and evolving, then it means that we're going to move from a reactive place to a responsive place. And responsive also has a responsibility that we are learning these ways of connecting. I also intuited, as I clairvoyantly saw this brain gut brain connection. And at the time when I was studying this, there wasn't science behind it. And I couldn't really write about it when I was doing my master's defense on this because there was no science. And now we've got loads of science that says, this is the byway and the highway to that gut feeling that, that, that all systems being go or all systems, let's chill out and relax. So I have a, a saying that I, I like around the vagus nerve, and that is one ship comes in over a calm sea. And when the vagus can be calm, we can just be easier, better creators. We're not reactive, we're thoughtful. And that's less of a place of coming from maybe our personality where there's wounds and, and traumas and things like that, that where we can move to more coming from soul. And how is it that we would like to how would we want to move forward? Because it's very programmable. All of these, uh, I, the ultimator chakra, I'm not going to say that it's programmable because it's really its own entity, but the reticular formation and the, especially the reticular activating system and the vagus nerve is very programmable. So it sounds like part of what you're doing is like by creating, opening the pipeline, then you're, you're actually creating a higher vantage point and a deeper understanding so that kind of settles the whole rest of your system down and you can kind of act in a more integrated fashion, it sounds like. Absolutely. We are constantly adapting to our environment and our situation. That's what's meant about epigenetics. But if we're choosing the same thing over and over again, then we're not necessarily evolving. And the beautiful thing about the, the latest research that's coming out in the Vegas is that as we can get in touch and we can feel and we can breathe and, and feel the reflexiveness of that system, we can be better choice makers, conscious mm -hmm. choice makers. Mm -hmm. You know, I think um, when we were talking about this before, you were saying that Eileen McCusick had kind of a fun way to think of the, the ultimate, which is like a divine male slot. Uh, you want to say a little, little bit more about that? Yeah, this, this was so funny. She was still relatively new to giving lectures and we happened to be at a conference together and I had not really put this out there before and we were both asked to speak at this conference where we were sort of just getting used to how's the audience going to receive this this is you know kind of curious her with tuning forks and mapping the biofield and so um I'm presenting on the ultimate chakra and she stops me in later on saying oh, I call that my mail slot I didn't know it was a chakra and it's like, wow, male slot, that's really interesting. So it's like you're receiving the messages that you need to receive. She's like, yes, and it's always accurate. It's always the way that I need to go. So you get that warm and fuzzy feeling and, and that is like a link up. Like you, you know, that's a confirmation. So it sounds like Eileen just had it sort of naturally open or at least open as a result of all the practices she'd done. So maybe you can start sharing a bit about how, how do we know what's the status of our ultimate chakra? How, how open is it or any, anything that needs to be cleared? And then uh, practices to start to um, really make it a part of our lives. You know, this is something to have some caution around because you don't just go willy nilly and send Kundalini up your spine and go and say, I'm gonna open my ultimate chakra. That's actually dangerous. There, there are some, some order of business, if you will. And you really wanna work through the heart. And so what we're putting into practice is not only just our conscious focus on the ultimate, but also doing this with the right intentions. The, the reality is, is that we've been living a lot from our lower three chakras and we are shifting as humanity. We are evolving. And there's a real opportunity now to be able to access these points. And I think now more than ever, we are ready for accessing and activating. So it sounds like it's probably wise to be take it within the context of an overall harmonizing, uplifting of your whole system rather than just focus your attention there. Uh, absolutely. 
So how do you how do you know for sure when when things are coming in through the ultimate major chakra versus some other subconscious source, some other you know, maybe a lower fear in your brain. How do you know when you're getting a clean, clear message there? There's there's an alignment that happens in our energy system that is really undeniable. Some people are really sensitive to it, like Eileen is and, and many of the clairvoyants, but I don't always have a sensation there. I've just learned over the years how to trust the guidance that's coming in. The part of the the working on our intuition period is teasing out what is egoic noise, inner noise of where things are coming in from fear or unhealed traumas or things that might be drivers or motivators. To be able to really tease that out in, in our system just takes practice. And we, we need to know, all right, how did that work out? And how did that not work out when we followed our guidance? And I, I've got some some clues around that too, because there's been people that say, oh, I followed my intuition and, to the letter and it still didn't work out according to what I wanted. Well, it's not always about what we want. It's about what is in the divine order and the higher order of things. So there is a little bit of a surrender that is also intended to take place as we do this work. So it's, there's a little bit of surrender involved in this. There's a little bit of trusting. And, and it sounds like it, once you've created a more balanced opening, then you can start to access that in a more intentional ways. I think we're going to do a practice together. So yeah, it's be a great time. Let's try yeah, to jump in. Perfect. So let's lead to that because grounding is really important. <sighs> okay. So I'm just dropping into my space, switching into a different energy here. And with some breaths here, let's drop in together. Invoking for grace. As we use our breath to connect with this invocation, we thank the Father, Mother, Creator, divine love giver, we invoke for your grace as we attune and ready our physical and energetic bodies for being receptive to receiving soul light through the Alta Major Chakra. We ask that our high selves regulate all energy centers and prepare all of us for this brief journey of attuning to the powerful triad of the Alta Major Chakra, the reticular formation, the vagus nerve, the throat chakra, the third eye, the crown, our carotid glands, and all of the energy centers named and unnamed. Breathing in and feel your grounding. Feel a root system deeply going into our beloved Mother Goddess Earth. Being consciously aware that our root system is actually branching out from our waist. And so it includes the, the deeper lower aspects of our energy body, the parts that can accumulate cruddy bits of things. So feeling that connection deepen. These roots have the ability to both give what we don't need anymore for composting to our mother goddess earth, things that no longer serve us. And these roots have the ability to bring up the respiration, the energy, the negative ions that we need to charge our batteries, charge our cells, charge our field, 
and we give great thanks for this. And bringing our conscious attention now to the area in our neck, at the back head, being aware of this region at the back head, at the base of the skull. This is a cosmic intersection of our physical and non-physical. There's an overlay, the reticular formation, which is deep in our spinal column, the vagus nerve, and the Alta Major Chakra that just sits off the body about two or four inches. As you focus your attention there, realize we are having a beautiful contemplation. This Alta Major Chakra, known as the Mouth of God, has a powerful linkage to other energy centers in our head, our high heart, and all the way through all of our known chakra systems. The development of the Alta Major leads to a conscious awareness of our Dharma and soul's work on the planet at this time. Breathe in this profound connection to be realized and experienced. There is an inflow that is constant. Allow your high self to set the aperture of opening Remember to keep your ground. The opening of the Alta Major will be as wide or narrow as is appropriate for you. The reticular formation is a key system in helping us create our own realities. It gives rise to our visual systems energetically. Breathing in, breathing out, just feel a smoothing. These key esoteric physical structures Help us to be ready to be more embodied, to accept and receive our natural divinity. Be aware of a soft, gentle light that may come with the feeling of a breeze. Keeping your focus at that back head. We are activating our innate guidance, our innate sovereignty. We are asking our personal power coming online and engaged. Asking your high self now to tune you to your own unique frequency, to your own unique soul light. The soul light comes from the monadic plane, higher than the Atmic and Buddhic. You don't need to worry about any of those places, but if you're familiar with the monad, that's where the soul light is emanating from. Simply by asking or affirming, thank you, high self, for attuning my unique frequency 
to balance and attune my Alta Major Chakra, my reticular activating system, my vagus nerve to receive my soul light. We may further ask and breathe in a calm inner radiance to smooth, calm, regulate the vagus nerve, this wondrous wanderer, connecting communications throughout all of our systems, helping us to know what we need to know. Pause here for a moment in a loving appreciation of your physical and energetic bodies as they regulate these energies. As you allow soul light to enliven, smooth out any energetic wrinkles. Bringing all of what you need in completely and gracefully. And breathe in and being aware of your root system. If there was any stress that came up with this meditation, this movement of energy. Let it go down your roots to be composted. Our Mother Earth knows exactly what to do with all of our stuff. We don't need to feel badly for that. It's a purposeful arrangement. Being aware of your breath, be aware of your feet, be aware of your body, be aware of your lungs and your breath in and out. Be in your now presence, letting your eyes begin to flutter open with a stillness of being in an exuberant confidence. And we ask to be in love with grace. Thank you. Well, thank you, Tiffany. That was truly divine and uh, so calming and soothing and just clarifying. I felt like there's a expansiveness that opened in many directions that start bo my body became more of a vessel for what really wants to happen rather than other agendas mm. fantastic we'll take it <laughs> <laughs> since we're kind of shifting gears back and forth with you're talking about activating the soul light and receiving that just a little bit more about um from the science side those kinds of light-based or presence-based practices what how does that actually work in our in our actual nervous system mm. well you know we really are light beings and we're we emit biophotonic energy in our biofield this is measurable what's interesting is that when we're really stressed so when our vagus nerve is on that high charge we leak more light. Mitochondria doesn't work as well. Our digestion doesn't work as well. So all of the aging mechanisms sort of get set off in that stress immune response. So when we feed ourselves with light, sunlight is ideal, you know, at the right times, of course, um, very early morning and in the evening. And just to have a practice of bringing in that light, that's very nourishing. 
<laughs> Very cool. I love the way you weave the science and the esoteric uh, insights together. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what to do to work with any insights that come. So there's a little bit of a process of stabilizing access, harmonizing our system and accessing all to major guidance. Um, so how do you keep it open? How do you sort of work with the guidance that arrives? Yeah. So for me, I, I had to work really hard to come back online when it finally had a meaning for me. I was meaning to have my intuition come back online. And then I knew about the Alta major chakra. And I was like, well, geez, I did such a good job shutting down my clairvoyance. What's going to be the thing that activates me again? We don't necessarily want to say with our will that we're going to keep this open. I give the command to my energy body as well as I ask my high self to always regulate this. It, there's a that regulation pattern. We want to work on the vertical relationship versus the horizontal relationship where we're coming from fear and, and anxiety and, and things like that. So this vertical relationship helps to keep us well intact with that guidance. There's going to be days where we feel off and that's just part of our learning. It's part of the opportunity that we have in the lessons. So the way that I do it, and I encourage other people to do it is, is what I just said of getting a, a regulated system so that I'm always essentially operating from a, a place of mindfulness and prayer. And whatever system is, is needed for me to be responsive from, what happens with the Alta Major is the high heart ultimately is what gets turned on. And that's really where we're operating from. It's not so much the focus of the Alta Major. The Alta Major is the key of being able to weave in these, these other energetic structures that help to create a balance within these energy systems so that we're not going to short circuit and do give ourselves kundalini syndrome or <laughs> something like that. Well, this is truly fascinating territory. People have a chance to go much deeper into this and, and really learn and practice and stabilize access in a way that can really lead to deeper awakening and healing and better guidance for life. So the program that Tiffany is going to be teaching is called Open to Divine Consciousness Through Your Alta Major Chakra. Receive insight, intuition, and intelligence from your higher self and beyond. You can find it at the URL, thealtamajorchakra.com. It's going to be a seven-week program. There are no prerequisites. It's really just open if you feel intuitively guided. If there's a little tap on your shoulder, a little nudge from your uh, Alta Major Chakra, a little sense that you're like, wow, this is a new growing edge that goes beyond some of what I've studied with the major seven chakras and how it can be complementary to healing work. There's all kinds of different motivation for why you'd want to make this exploration and, and really take these practices into your life. Um, foremost for me is just simply to have a clearer channel for intuition because it's so much easier to navigate life in a good, aligned, and relaxing way when you have strong, intuitive guidance about how to do so. So um, I'd love, Tiffany, in your own words, to hear about why take this journey with you, how do people's lives shift, and then I'll read out the module titles. You give a preview of what's coming. We don't need any more apprentices. We, we, it's like the, the fallen guru, the era, the epoch of the fallen guru. We need to be this for ourselves. It's time. It, it, it's, it's obviously time. So I think there's three main signs that, to know when we're ready, and that is that many people are being called to service. They actually want to be able to give more. And they're ready for also a renewal for themselves. They know there's something deeper and they're also not afraid of transformation because it takes the transformation to be able to, to, to go the mile, go the distance for, for what it is that we are here to do. I do believe there's a new earth happening. I believe that has to do with the awakening of what's happening in our, our human heart and becoming that homo luminosity to that light being, to really have all of our systems on and engaged. <laughs> Time is now. I'm with you on that. So module one is called Meet the Triad of Your Inner Knowing, Attuning Your Physical and Etheric Bodies. And you've got uh, Eileen McCusick as a guest teacher for that. 
Yeah, actually, she's going to do guest teaching for the beginning and the end. In our speaking about it, what she found was because I, I asked her, would you close out the, the session and, and, you know, the seven modules? And she says, well, wait, we've just been learning some really important lessons about let's let's actually help people have their energies primed and be ready to go for this work because she's experienced this work as well. And she knows the potency that, that's there. And also being able to have our systems be able to be ready to receive it. So she is going to offer a tuning. And so that that's really an important uh, feature. And then also at the end to help us integrate it. Working with these centers just needs to be done with a certain responsibility. And the way I run groups is that we're not just only working when we're online, we, there's a container, there's a sacredness in what is actually being manifested for the healing to happen in each and every one of us, and also for how we take it out into the world. Great stuff. Module two, the Alta Major Chakra, the hidden doorway to divine consciousness. The Alta Major has been this kind of best kept secret, but I had to go deep into parts actually that I couldn't even put in my thesis of where this comes from in, in ancient Egypt and um, what, what was actually happening in these, these times of, of initiations. And we're, we're doing it so much faster today. And, but we need to do it with a consciousness. And, and so that is the importance of this is it's now the, the era for really for us to walk in in our power peacefully and safely. Module three, receive clear guidance, your inner voice versus inner noise. So I had massive bouts of OCD and incredible anxiety when I was dealing with the fact that I had turned off my guidance. I was successful in you know, not being overwhelmed anymore by the information bombardment that I had. And what I found is the need to have discernment and also be able to regulate our energies in a really uh, balanced way so that we can do the work that's really being requested of us as divine humans out in the world. But we can go through confusing messages. We can go through the language of the ego. We can go through these things of where we, we need to sort of settle in what's the ego, what's the noise, what's really real guidance. And, and so I've got some, some specific guidelines of what to listen for, what to watch for. And ultimately it's about, you know, gaining trust and clarity for that which we are receiving and how to work with it. And if we're attached to outcomes, that, that can really do us a disservice. So we're gonna be in that module, we're gonna be working a lot with the discernment of energies. Module four, discern the truth by stopping empathic overwhelm. So this is complementary to what I was just saying. So the ego piece of this, where it's a lot, it kind of be noisy bits, like what, what's teasing out real guidance. And then empaths are oftentimes, I'm a recovering empath and I have to constantly modulate my own energy, is being having empathy is one thing. Being overly empathic means that our nervous systems are usually overwhelmed. And then we have to tease out what is somebody else's and what is ours. And that is really essential and obligatory as we are called to service. We all have intuitive knowing and we all have guidance within our system. This just helps us to be able to modulate what we're really working in in the quantum soup of working with other people and, and what's ours. So we're gonna go into three key questions to ask about um, how to perceive when we're working with somebody else's energy versus ours. Module five, make conscious choices using the energetic anatomy of intuition. Stepping out of our comfort zones and the default zones for how we've been creating and getting out of the insaneness of sameness, I call it, is, is really important. And that's a lot of what this, this module is about is the default in the mode network of the brain, how it relates to the reticular activating system, the, the drama triangle that has to do with how we're doing relationships in our world. Is this healthy? And then how do we get to a place of surrender? 
So we'll be talking about that. So we're really bridging the gaps here in when we're acting from personality and when we're acting from more of soul and, and true guidance. And ultimately, it's about letting in more soul light that's essential for our human development. Module six, discover your innate intelligence systems to consciously create inner harmony. Mm -hmm. So the vagus nerve is giving us this internal feedback system. It, it is a, an internal feedback system. It's, it's looped unto itself and, and we get to learn the patterns and study the patterns of ourselves in, in order to get more clued in. So I'll be offering techniques for how we can do that. There's a lot that's out there. You mentioned earlier, Shift has many trainings on, on the vagus nerve. So this is now going to be in harmony with the reticular activating system and the ultimajor chakra so that we develop a consciousness to our be emotionally elegantly regulated and to be able to know what to do with when something is a, a karmic plan versus something that we are just wanting to have control over. So it, it's also linking how energy is actually moving in our systems. So, and here in this module, we'll also be working with the linkages of the high heart. And module seven, tuning and integrating the higher heart and vagus nerve with the ultimajor chakra. And this also includes Eileen again. Yeah, so it's what a treat to, to be able to do this. I'm glad she suggested it because this is going to be yet a, a new way that we're going to be interacting together. And she's always developing. I'm always developing. So it'll be super fun to see what actually culminates here. But ultimately, this is we want to integrate. It's one thing to transform. It's another thing that to integrate all of what we are doing. So this is the intention here is about once again, bringing in, smoothing out the energies and helping us to modulate and so that we can go out into the world and serve at a capacity that is mutually beneficial. So we can put this into motion in our lives. It's a fantastic program, and I think it's really exploring some important territory. And I love the bridging of the practical and intuitive and esoteric with the with the scientific as well. So again, the whole thing program is laid out in detail at theultimajorchakra.com, theultimajorchakra.com. So you get not only the seven 90-minute live sessions with Tiffany, which is going to include interaction time, Q&A time, guided processes. You also get recordings, video and audio of every session. So you can go back and do practices again and, and really make sure you get everything plus word for word transcripts. So you have weekly exercise and practice for home. There's a Facebook community to support you and deepen your experience. There's also a number of bonuses you're going to find on the page at theultimajorchakra.com which includes a video teaching, an eight-page presentation, and nine-page transcript from Tiffany on your human health rays and how to clean them. That's coming out of uh, some of the ageless wisdom tradition, right? Um, mm -hmm. There's also a video teaching from uh, Tiffany and Eileen on the Ultimajor Chakra. There's an ebook on the biology of transformation, the physiology of presence and spiritual transcendence, and a monadic light attunement meditation. I'm sure anything about either of those last two? The meditation is meant to sort of just be a practice whenever a person wants to do it, and not only when we're going to be doing it in the course. So it's just meant to be complementary, because we really always want to be attuning to that area of, of going higher. Uh, and, and so that's what that meditation is about. My book, this is the, the biology of transformation. It's essentially the physiology of presence and transcendence and talking about all these structures. So uh, we're giving away the, uh, the ebook for it. Well, those are great extra bonuses. And at the page at theultimajorchakra.com, the you're gonna find a special bonus. It's actually a seven weekly video teachings from Tiffany called the Heal and Thrive Free Yourself Formula, Transform Anxiety and High Sensitivity into Serenity. This is actually valued at $797 just by itself. And Tiffany, you wanna share a little bit about that special bonus which folks get when they sign up right away by midnight? Yeah, absolutely. I actually have a list that is cultivated for the last two decades on about 21 causes or 22 causes of anxiety that are maybe less known. But to make the unconscious conscious and really look at what's the source of anxiety is so helpful for recognizing what actually is really going on that your body is giving you the message of. And that's what uh, that whole course is about. 
really cool extra reason to sign up by midnight tonight. So that's very generous to, to include that whole seven weekly video teachings for folks. So it's truly, truly going to be a, a really beautiful and, and powerful and transformative program. And it's, we've kept the investment really accessible. It's just three payments of $109. You save 10% when you pay in full with one payment up front of $297. Course is going to start on September 21st, which is the International Day of Peace, very auspicious, and uh, and run Wednesdays at 1 Pacific, 4 Eastern. So even if you can't make those live times, you can still get the full value with the community, the recordings, and the transcripts, and, and really the practices, which is when you make them your own, you really carry forth uh, powerful tools for your lifetime. I also invite you to uh, read through some of the testimonials at the ultimajorchakra.com. There's Tiffany is a true healer, not only brings breadth and depth of knowledge, but her heart and instincts and infused me with hope, energy, and excitement and uh, really beautiful testimonials of people who have been blessed by Tiffany's guidance and support and teaching. So you're in good hands and you'll, you're going to get some very valuable practices and perspectives that will enable you to open this channel to higher wisdom and make it part of your life. So Tiffany, thank you so much for this time today. It's been a joy to be with you. Uh, anything that you still want to share that with folks who are considering going deeper with you? I, I thank you for this opportunity, Stephen. I, I so love and adore what the shift has been up to and making it easy to consume this kind of mystical information because how else do we get to come together? And really in this course, my heart is so geared to where the ancient mystics left us breadcrumbs. And it's, it's our job for, you know, to go pick up what the spiritual hierarchy uh, gave us and, and to be able to do it together in a together way is really, we go further together and group way of learning and doing. I just have so much evidence for incredible transformation that happens. And we really need all hands on deck right now. So it doesn't matter whether we're actually in the world as a healer or not right now. It, we all have that capacity to be able to tap into a greater degree and be able to access our own personal power and our own personal sovereignty to a greater degree. Mm. I think we're at a tipping point right now and it's so essential. And I, I'm grateful for the opportunity to do this with SHIFT. Well, I'm fully aligned with you on that. And we, I believe we are at a tipping point. It requires each of us to awaken to our full divine potential. So thank you for providing a pathway to do that that's grounded in science and really gives us access to all these uh, deeper esoteric traditions as well. So again, Tiffany's going to be teaching open to divine consciousness through your ultimajor chakra. You can find all the details at the ultimajorchakra.com. You get that full seven part, $797 value when you sign up by midnight tonight. That's the heal and thrive for yourself formula. So Tiffany, thank you so much for this time. Thank you all for joining. Many blessings. Thank you.